this is set two. Wesley has to win to take it to set three. For Nodebeck, he is the guy who knocked out Hikaru Nakamura in the survival stage. Takes set one against Wesley So. Is Wesley feeling the pressure? Because Wesley had this incredible run in the round robin, but we've seen him get a bit shaky at the end. Yeah, Wesley earlier in the event, he did have that one match against Maxime where he won on demand in game two, but he hasn't had his back against the proverbial wall very much. And being in must win territory for Wesley So can be a bit uncomfortable in the game they're off. And we are off. Wesley So, what will be his uh, opening approach in this one? A set that he has to win on demand. He does the usual, takes his glasses off, and it's 1v3. Cowboys everywhere are rejoicing. Magnus Carlsen said one of his 2023 aims is to win a game with 1v3. Can Wesley pull it off for him? Wow, Wesley, so loving uh, the moment, loving Toronto, and surprising us. This I would never, ever have predicted. He has played 1v3 as recently as the World Cup over the board in classical, in rapid. He has, years and years ago, produced a course, I believe, for chess base uh, on this opening before he'd ever even played it over the board. But uh, this is really rare to see at the top level. White gives up any ambitions in the center and starts playing on the flanks. Look at this last move. He's being headed a bishop, brought White's light square bishop out, and now White's knight sits on the edge of the board. And uh, Nodebeck replies in kind. And this is one of those openings where I say, do not try this at home, because both players just put their knights on the rim. Wesley just moved his light square bishop for a second time before developing his kingside knight or castling. It's going to be this, a situation where you're like, what in the world? My coach taught me to develop all my pieces. Castle, don't block uh, some pawn pushes so my other bishop can get out. This is wacky chess, and maybe it's what Wesley needs. Do not try this at home unless you're Wesley So. But that said, Wesley is the one who's got his head in hands already. There's a very unconventional opening approach right here. It's the kind of opening that you want to play in this format when your opponent has little time. It's rapid play. You want to get them out of opening preparation. But so far, Nodebeck has played quickly and this is the first move that he slows down on. What is going on in his mind? Is he trying to counter the night jumps that are coming from White next? Yeah, uh, Nodebeck, he's trying to just uh, gain his bearings in this position. Of course, he wouldn't have expected 1v3 when uh, the move came, when the time came. He will have faced it before throughout his career, though. And now he's just going back into those uh, memory banks, that mind palace. He's recalling what his opening theory said. Maybe he's trying to get Wesley out of his preparation. Either way, this opening, Mac uh, Wesley here is going to look like a genius or it will backfire. And... Uh
Dustin Sotrov, as always, just never giving up. And I think there were a lot of takeaways from day one, and one of them was that you just continue to fight it out till the end. And he has sacrificed his rook for that bishop that you were pointing out, which controls key squares on the queen side. And now a black can think about stepping up with that rook to be to, to create some chances, to at least create a chaos on the board, a huge threat. Queen takes pawn as well as the knight in the center of the board on the fire. And what's his move here is pretty easy. He has one move that defends the knight and defends the pawn. Queen diagonal to the, to the right hand side. Queen e3 protects both. The black king is also about to get checkmated. So it's not just the white king in danger. The black king actually may be even more trouble. So great recognition by Wesley. Also great time managed by him. He's been leading on the clock from the start to the finish. And now Nordebeck just down to a minute left and his chances are going out the window. And I want to draw your attention to the left side of the board because that central pawn was grabbed by Magnus Carlsen and we were talking about whether you take advantage of the pin or not. Fabi, instead of hoovering all the pawns off the board, steps up with the rook to the central file, attacks that knight. White has moved the rook as well. Are we expecting all the trades on that e5 square? Pick up that b4 pawn, draw, agreed? Yeah, Fabiano Caruana has the chance to draw pretty much on the spot if he trades off the white knight in the center of the board over there. If he takes it, it's a draw, guaranteed. He's looking for more, he's trying to look for options to keep the game alive, but ultimately there was nothing else. He takes, 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 uh, and the rook's off the board as well. Black will take the pawn, and dead draw. We see a handshake, Carlson against Caruana, it is a draw. First game between the two top players in the world, world number one and world number two, ends in a draw. Three more rapid games to go. Meanwhile, Wesley putting the finishing touches in his uh, game. Has Nordebeck managed to muddy the waters from a... Uh, Wesley so chose Messi as his favourite footballer. This position is the definition of Messi, but I do think he's going to win it. I think he's just got too much control. He's got an extra rook. Nordebeck trying his best to set up these sneaky traps, attacking White's rook on d1 now, threatening to maybe bring the black rook to b3, but look at this. Wesley so so energetic. Knight to c6, counter-attacking against the black rook. Watch out for the black king. Checkmate on the back rank incoming. And I think this will be the clincher. There's checkmate on the back right, there's a checkmate if that queen lands on g7. Everything is a problem for Nunebeck. He's also down an entire rook, right? It's not like he has material compensation. And I think that's the point. Even if he doesn't deliver the check and the queens get traded off, uh, that's an end to the game as well. But there's one check that black gets in. Do not step up with that king to a2. That would be a mate on Wesley. So he blocks it with the queen. No time to pick up the rook on d1 because black's queen is hanging on f6. And that is it. It's handshakes. Wesley gets the job done in game one. His route to try to level the match score and take it to set three. We heard that interview with Wesley and Danny Wesley talking about his best game ever against Sergey Karyakin, which was a beautiful one. You should all look that up. But this game right here, that was also a sight to behold. He just crushed Nordenberg. Never gave him a chance. Absolutely, and I think that was the more impressive thing than the actual win itself, that how it was Wesley dominating from start to